Who's ready for the eclipse? I'm ready for the eclipse. I got my glasses all set to go. I can't see a darn thing. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the show. Uh, we're all getting crazy. I think I busted my glasses. Look at that. Now I'm gonna have to tape them up. Uh, what are you gonna do, right? How's everybody doing today? Hey, welcome. How are the rest of my worldly brothers out there, I, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are uh, getting ready for this uh, big hoopla that's going to be happening tomorrow. This big eclipse. And uh, I'm, I'm ready. I didn't realize how dark these things are. Did you guys ever, did you guys ever try some of these things? Um, I looked, I went outside today and stared at the sun for a bit. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, you don't realize how small the sun is till you look at it through one of these things and then you realize like it's just this big you know when you look at it like in its full glory with all the um, the actual rays and everything coming off of it it looks huge but it's actually like this big so just goes to show how fragile we are on this little marble we call earth right we think we're invincible and we think everything's everything's under control but we realize, uh, if we think about it, that we're just on a little tiny marble hurtling through space uh, and trying to grow through life as if everything is totally under control. <laughs> Nothing unusual here, right? Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys are doing really well. Um, I'm, I'm psyched up for the eclipse. I hope, um, you know, I hope there's going to be something to see. Unfortunately, though, I'm going to be, I don't know if I'm actually going to catch the eclipse tomorrow. My daughter's actually scheduled for uh, getting her tonsils out. So um, it's kind of weird timing, but has to be done. So she's going to be, you know, going through that and I'm going to be there with her. And so is my wife. So I don't know if we're going to, actually get a chance to see anything maybe we will afterwards if it's if it's quick hope nobody's stressed about it i think that um overall the only thing that stresses me out about the eclipse is uh the way people react you know people will get a little crazy about all this stuff and uh this is how people um you know I guess they're not used to these kind of things. I'm sure I'm going to see some people driving with these things on tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure of it. And um, you can't see a darn thing with these things on. So I don't recommend you guys wearing these glasses and driving at all. And if you got any of these, you know, I don't know, depending on where you got them from, test them out first. Make sure everything is good before you go out and stare at the sun. Uh, just, you know, a word of advice, a word, a word of caution. So how's everybody doing? Today is show 202. So hopefully you guys already know the drill. You guys, uh, many of you have been here before and uh, are regulars on the show. We basically talk about gear galore. We try to navigate through the maze we call guitar equipment, guitar and gear. And we take some occasional deep dives into um, you know, the subjects of guitars and amplifiers and music. And sometimes we take a left turn and talk about other things like the eclipse <laughs> and things like that. So you never know what you're going to get on this show. But I want to welcome everybody and uh, I want to encourage everybody to please subscribe to the channel. If you want to be able to chat and you're new and it's the first time you've actually participated in the Sunday show now's a good time to hit the subscribe button uh, you need to be subscribed in order to be able to chat otherwise you won't be able to chat and it takes a minute so just do it right now and you'll be able to jump in on the fun hope you guys are all doing well uh, I'm playing my this guitar today this is my 335 um, 
yeah. giving it some love today. I haven't played it in a while. I've been playing the heck out of my SGs. And um, today when I took this guitar, I'm like, wow, it's heavier than I remember it. You know, even for a semi-hollow body, it's still way heavier than the SGs are. So uh, getting accustomed to that and just getting re-familiar, familiarized with the neck because obviously when you're playing an SG, things are in different places. So getting reaccustomed, muscle memory. Um, thanks, Steven. Yeah, I really enjoy playing this guitar. It's a fun guitar to play. If you play that song and then you play this one, what's the other song? It messes you up almost the same. If you play them back to back. <laughs> And then, subtle difference, but it's, you know, the beginning, that part. So anyways, um, gotta love those semi-hollows, yeah, indeed. You know what, Cool Tunes? Those, these semi-hollows, um, to me, don't get enough love. I love them. I think they're great. Uh, aging nicely already. And uh, I don't know. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to take this guitar to the rehearsal tonight or the SG. Um, the SG is more comfortable and lighter. Uh, but I still like the, the output on these pickups. A little hotter. So I, f I find they're a little bit... Uh, a little, I don't know, more meaty, I think. I like the chunk. can do a lot with these semi-hollows so don't underestimate the power of a semi-hollow um, time surfing alien says he's been looking for one can't afford a Gibson though ah oh, there's a lot of other choices man you don't have to go Gibson um, the vintage guitar brand has a lot of nice 335 models that are actually they perform qu quite well and not too shabby. You can always go with other brands. You can even get an Epiphone if you want to get something a little cheaper and just maybe, you know, switch out the pickups if you're really picky about them. And you get a cool guitar at a fraction of the cost. I have to say, I love the neck. Love the neck on this one. And, and one thing I realized that it's not that different from the neck on my Gibson um my 60s uh sg it's actually quite thin this neck the classic sg i just got which is there has a beefier neck but it's not uncomfortable at all i thought maybe having a, a, a fatter neck would not be as comfortable but that one's really comfortable i like it a lot i like variety guys what can i say uh Gramora says uh, that they, he's been looking for a Sire H7 with P90s. I love P90s. I've been talking about the virtues of P90s for a long time uh, on this show. And, uh, you know, I come to discover that you either like them or you don't, right? I mean, P90s to me are a really nice compromise between the single coil pickups and a humbucker especially if you get a nice set of p90s that perform well you have this kind of rawness to them and a, a little bit of a bite you know but um 
maybe a little less output than humbuckers, but they still are quite nice. Hey Christian, how are you? I'm glad to hear that uh, it's sunny in Germany. We've had crazy weather. April's been nuts. The last couple of days we got, what did we get? I think about 30 centimeters of snow just the other day. So Mother Nature's been playing games with us here. We've been alternating between really nice weather, sunny weather, you know, where we're, we're finally able to see the grass. And then just the other day, Mother Nature's like, ha, 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 you thought it was over, huh? Here's some more. Ah. And we got 30 centimeters. So today it's supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be sunnier and warmer. And I'm looking forward to that. I went outside on my porch earlier, soaked up a little bit of sun. It was only a couple of degrees here, but I'm already in short sleeves. As you can see, I'm itching to go and trying to get as much vitamin D as I can in my system because my system's absolutely starved of vitamin D at this point. And it's like, let's go, you know? Davis says, I started playing hollow body guitars early thanks to Lifeson, Emmett, Steve Howe. Yeah, yeah. All the classics, don't forget, you know, early Clapton as well. You know, he was playing SGs and Gibson, uh, I think a hollow body at some point during the cream days as well. <laughs> the tone because you can get that you know you can get that nice like it's clean even though you even if you put the take the volume down you don't lose that much sometimes on some guitars like when you go down to four like I am now it, it gets muddy and you lose the top. But you don't get that with this. Whether it's on 10 or on 4. Nice and versatile. Anyways. Getting carried away there. Marcel says, don't you know by now that there's always a little storm beginning of April? I know, Marcel. I just, I was in denial. I figured maybe not this year, but I was wrong. So, shame on me. Kultun says, sold uh, my one of my amps in the hunt for a new head, maybe the Marshall SV20H. Good choice, Kultun's. I love that amp. I mean, it all depends on the flavor you're after. And if you don't want something fancy with, you know, a whole bunch of switching options and you like that Marshall tone, um, it's a great amp. It takes pedals extremely well, you know, so you can, there's pretty much any sound you can, you can want in that amplifier if you know how to use it. And it does have the effects loop on it. So, you still can use, you know, delays and reverbs and whatnot. Gene says, "LOL, that warble, the lick. What are you, what are you, what are you referring to, Gene? That warble." <laughs> My first guitar was a Framus hollow single cutaway single pickup 1968 got it in 1974 says green rumor Framus guitars are extremely well made I know a lot of people that really like those guitars they don't pop up used that much anymore I don't know why I think they're just uh, people hang on to them maybe Yeah, the P90s have that dirt, 
but they clean up, but they don't always get like 100% clean. There's a, they're a little rough around the edges. That's what I like about them. It gives you a little bit more like a, a little more flavor to the note, if I can say that. Hey, Steve, how's it going? I'm going to just scroll down in the back. I just go back back to some previous comments just to see if anybody men mentioned something that I need to comment on earlier and I missed. Um, J. Paul, I just got the cheap, the cheapo M Wave Mini Universe, cheap construction, pretty great, pretty great sound though. Sometimes you know these little inexpensive uh, units surprise you, and it feels good when when you actually get surprised with something that you didn't necessarily need to spend so much money on. Mark says he's only getting 90% coverage from the Eclipse in, in Maryland. I don't know what the coverage is going to be here. I know that if you go, I think, further east from where I am, apparently you can get a really nice view. But I'm sure it's going to be all over the internet. It's going to be all over the news. So even if you don't have your glasses and even if you're not in a situated in prime area for the Eclipse. I'm sure you're going to be able to see it. <laughs> Who's saying the grid is going to go down? No, I don't think so. All that's happening, guys, is the moon is, you know, going to be in the path of the sun. It's going to be the same as usual, just that we're going to be lined up. It's going to be lined up with the Earth, so... It's business as usual in terms of orbit. Nothing changes. It's just that, you know, it's going to be in the shadow. Which will be cool. I think the last time something like this happened, I remember it. So I, it must have been in the 70s. Can anybody tell me when the last, like, full solar eclipse happened? I know it happens more often, but it's not necessarily a full e uh, eclipse. I think it was back in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember exactly the, the date. Gene says, what about other P's, like the P100? Can you explain them? Gene, I don't know much about the P100. <laughs> I think all it is, is is perhaps an overwhelmed P90. I don't even know why they call it P90. Where did the name come from? Hey, Dan, nice to see you, man. Dan's here. Dan in New Jersey. Uh, if you guys spot it's me, Don P, I, I want to ask him if he actually got the um, his prize yet. I didn't see him here today. So maybe he's not available or maybe he's playing with his new pedal i don't know but if he if he pops in i'm gonna ask him if you got it robert says i'm lucky to be in the path austin but all we will be able to see is thunderstorms i'm pretty sure tomorrow is supposed to be clear here let's see shane Shane, how's it going, man? Shane says, Tony, can you show everyone my picks from the 200th episode? Sure. I think if I still have them in my directory. Just give me a second. I just want to see something here. Uh, one sec. Just checking what the temperature is going to be like tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be beautiful, apparently. It's going to be sunny and 17. Wow, it's going to be nice. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. Shane wants me to show his photos. Let me just see if I still have the directory. I put them all in a, uh, in a single directory to make it easy. And I may have deleted it. Uh, hold on. Let me check. One sec. I think we have them here. Is that it? Uh, 
No, that's not it. Okay. Mm, I think I might have deleted the directory. Uh, shame. Mm. I think I deleted it, dude. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I have it here. I think I have it here. Is this it? Uh, boom. Here we go. Uh, I'll see if I can share. If I can share my screen. There you go. There's our buddy with his flying V. <laughs> and I love the shirt. <laughs> we did show it, I think, on the show, didn't I? I think I did. I think we went through most of them. Did you wanna did you wanna talk about that particular guitar? Or mention anything about that particular guitar? Or you just wanted people to see it? Is it all good? <laughs> it's cool to see you guys uh, with your gear. Uh, ben says, Tony, I think I remember you saying that your 335 has 57 classics in it. Did they originally come with those? Yeah, they did. It was originally 57 classics in this guitar. I didn't swap them out. So I'm happy with those. Hey, you know, I was, I was playing something earlier. Shane, I didn't show your picture on the tw on the two hundredth. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I, I went through a whole bunch. I don't remember. There was a it was a blur that day. Apologize if I didn't show that. Yeah, I remember you sending me more than one picture, but I only put one in the directory, so I would have to dig it out from my uh, from my other photos there. I thought the flying V was cool, so I wanted to show that. Uh, I was I was playing something earlier. Uh, do you I, any of you guys ever play? Um, Are you gonna go my way, Lenny Kravitz? Do you guys know how to play that? There's there's a one a thing I discovered. Well, discovered. You know, the, during the solo part, the hardest part of that song. It's not necessarily the solo. It's coming out of the solo. So that's why I'm asking if any of you guys play that song during, uh, you know, maybe with your band or if you know how to play the solo. Um, because when the solo ends, there's a solo, the guitar solo, and then there's a little break, and then there's a little drum fill, and then you go into the this 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 other thing before the main. It goes when you come out of that there's a little there's a little like but the, that's the trickiest part of the solo because when you're coming out of the solo if you're counting with the drums it's not on a like the four or the one it's like the end of three so it's really tricky to come in on time after the solo and it always messes me up yeah, and there's a flanger in there during the... During that part. And that makes that... Um, that that sound is really that the cool part of that solo. You know, it's funny because when you play the solo... You can play it like that, which is wrong, or you can play it like this. So like you go, you go. So when you're playing it up here, sounds a lot different than when you're playing it down here. And a lot of people will stay here in this position. And then it's wrong. Sounds similar, but it's hear a difference.
Anyway, so if you listen to that or if you're into playing that song, it's that little break that is the hardest to get. Because if you're, if you're not totally in sync, you're going to come in on the wrong note and it sounds bad. <laughs> Uh, Station and Rest says, Tony, you need a flying V to play that song. Yeah. Does he play it on a flying V in the video or is it a, an SG? Yeah, I don't remember. Ben says, interesting because I have the same guitar, 2022 model, and it came with calibrated T-types. Any idea what's up with different pups? Just from different years? I don't know. I don't really know, man. All I know is that's what's in this guitar, and um, I bought the guitar used, right? So perhaps somebody messed with it, but I don't think so. I think they were they were um, shipping with different pickups. I didn't buy it back into 2022. It's an earlier model. I've had this guitar for quite a few years now already, so I think it was an earlier model. I think everybody needs a 335. Thanks, Max. Thanks, uh, Time Surfing Alien. Yeah, I love, I love, um, you know, it took me a while to muster up the courage to buy one of these because they're not cheap, but um, I love them and I'm glad I bought it. Even like Quiet has a nice sustain to it. And it stays in tune relatively well. I Max, I had the um, a cheap version of the uh, hollow body from Harley Benton. They were pretty good. Yeah, the the shipping on the Harley Benton seems to be a little bit expensive. But I mean, shipping in general has gone through the roof. It's crazy, you know. Like, uh, just to just to tell you, like, you know, when I showed this last time, um, this little logo, which was made for me by our good friend Stephen here, um, you know, he shipped this to me. This is just a little thin piece of wood, and I saw on you know his envelope, he paid seventeen bucks. To ship this to me you know and it's basically paper thin so imagine if you're shipping a guitar so I, I think shipping costs are like crazy nowadays <laughs> have you have you learned to play anything from Chuck Berry you know it's funny people do automatically think Chuck Berry when they see a, a, a red 335 I'm not I don't really play Chuck Berry stuff I mean, that's a Chuck Berry lick, right? I mean, that's basic Chuck Berry stuff. <laughs> but no, I don't really play Chuck Berry all that much. Shane says, I've been steering clear of the 335, too big and bulky. And I think I can get most of the tones on a Les Paul anyway. I mean, a lot of people don't feel comfortable with the size of the 335. It is true. It's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger, you know, it's not, a, not thicker really, but it's bigger. And it's, uh, I guess, easier to play sitting down than maybe standing up, I guess, but I like it. You can get the sounds from, I mean, you can get the sounds from a Gibson, like a Les Paul, but it doesn't have the same feedback, doesn't have the same bite, slightly different. And I like the feedback that you can get out of these guitars when you're playing live because of the resonance coming, you know, the sound being, the airwaves being pushed by the amplifier kind of like resonates with the open body. And it feels so alive. 
<laughs> I think uh, Marty uh, Marty McFly 2 Time Surfing Alien, right? Because he was playing this guitar on um, Back to the Future. Apparently that was um, a mistake because the model that he was playing, I think it was a 355. It wasn't a 335. I think it was a 355 and they, they weren't, um, they hadn't been introduced yet. So the time frame in the movie was wrong. Paul says the old 335s had 57 classics, so young jazz guys put them in their various more affordable semis. Yeah, that could be it. I mean, I don't, um, I would have to check the date. Does anyone know how to check the dates on the Gibsons in terms of uh, when a guitar was made? If you can, uh, I'll check it out. And we'll, we'll try and see if, if the pickups on this guitar are correct. <laughs> JP is asking me to play, uh, Jean-Pierre is asking me to play the solo of a whole lot of love. You're asking me to play it like uh, not even warmed up on a Sunday morning. So I'm trying my best. But that's a cool solo. Um, 3.45, Shane says. Was it 3.45 or was it 3.55? 58? 58? Yeah, I, I get those mixed up. They look similar. I don't remember if it had the, the, the trapezoid inlays. Jimmy Page on a 335. <laughs> you can play Jimmy Page on anything. <laughs> I think. <laughs> How many of you think this uh, video is going to get demonetized? I think so. <laughs> I don't care. It's all good. Presley, I mean, Eddie says uh, uh, in a response to Presley here, Strat type, I can't get the action below 664 or it frets out. The setup seems dialed in. So I guess he's doing a setup and has technical questions there. Getting an, uh, the action low on a guitar is really a combination of things, right? It's really, um, you gotta dial in the relief on the neck. You gotta also uh, make sure the nut is cut properly. If the nut here is too high, it's gonna affect things down here as well. Um, and then of course you have to adjust the bridge and you have to adjust, adjust the saddles. And some guitars simply won't go as low as you want them to go without bu without buzzing. Um, this one is really nice in terms of action. It's very low for a 335. I wasn't able to get the Epiphone version of this guitar that I had briefly down to the same specs as this one. And that could be a couple of things. It could be the neck angle, because these things are set next they're not always set the same way that could affect things the nuts you know curvature all kinds of stuff um thoughts on gretsch hollow bodies yeah if you don't like the 335 i don't know if you're gonna like the gretsch not because of the sound 
because the Gretsch is thicker. It's a th it has a thicker body. It is a sm slightly smaller body, but it's thicker. So you may not feel comfortable with it. I like the Gretsches. I've played one many times and I, I never owned one, but I like the way they sound. And I, I don't know why I never actually bought a Gretsch. I don't really, yeah. and again, it depends on which Gretsch you're talking about, right? You can also get the Gretsch, the, the smaller body Gretsches that um, Malcolm uses. Or you can get the, the you know, the, the bigger body Gretsches that, uh, you know, our buddy from the Stray Cats likes to play on. I'm talking about the bigger ones. I like them. I like the way they sound. Hey, Charles. Welcome, buddy. How are you, man? Uh... I'm just looking here and Grimora says I saved for two months for the Duffy White Falcon. That's yeah, a sweet guitar. So when you play that guitar, do you put your foot on the amplifier, you know, and play, do the Duffy thing, you know? <laughs> the way he does it with the attitude. <laughs> You gotta do the foot thing. I can't put the foot. I can't put my foot on the uh, the desk here. I, I don't reach, or else I would. It makes it sound better. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Charles. Welcome aboard, my friend. Nice to have you here. Charles says, Tony, any Expedia? Sorry, I don't understand the question. What do you mean, Expedia? Uh, Grimora says, I live in a 1.5 bedroom apartment. My neighbors know when that one comes out, LOL. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. My neighbors, my old neighbors, bless them, were very patient with me. Uh, now I don't have neighbors stuck to me anymore, so I can play as loud as I want, but I think even though my house is not necessarily connected to anyone else's house, my neighbors still compliment me on my tone when I'm outside. <laughs> I think they're subtly trying to tell me something. So they still hear it. Duffy's tone on um, the cult electric was, was awesome. You know, pure raw rock tone, so. Charles wants to know, any experience with Blues Juniors? Yeah, I've owned one in the past. I've done um, a video on that, uh, on my Blues Junior. I had done a bunch of mods on it too, back in the day. I don't have it anymore, but uh, Blues Juniors are, are really nice amplifiers. And they were, you know, affordable back in the day. Now they're, they're expensive again. <laughs> Dan says, you smoke this morning, Tony? Bong hits maybe? <laughs> Why do you say that, Dan? Why? Because <laughs> I'm playing more than usual. Um, no, no bong hits. Just coffee. Coffee, that's it. Maybe I slept better last night. I don't know. Maybe it's the, the eclipse happening tomorrow is getting to me. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that I'm rehearsing tonight and I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. Maybe it's all that stuff rolled into one. I don't know. <laughs> Grimora says Duffy's tone secret is two delays to fatten things up. I think he also plays through two different amps. If I'm not mistaken, he, has the, he plays through the Vox and a Marshall at the same time, I think. Plus, he still has the, uh, the Roland Jazz Chorus for the clean parts, right? So,
I don't know if you guys recognize this song. But it's a Creed song. I don't usually play drop D tunes that, o that often, but they're fun to play. Uh, Gene says, Tony, did you watch the Steve Howe interview on Trilogy's guitar show? No, I didn't. I should actually uh, jot that one down. I got to watch that one. There's so much stuff coming out, guys. It's hard to keep up with everything, you know? Every, every, you just like, you know, you, you, you turn your head for a minute and there's something new. And people are talking about it and you missed it. Um, what what do you guys think about what uh, Gene Simmons said about his... Um, you know, I don't know if you caught that or not. But Gene Simmons talked about uh, selling the, the KISS library of music. I don't know if you know that. They did that recently. And I think what they ended up selling it for was 300 million, which seems a little bit low for KISS stuff. But apparently there was some kind of a deal made. It wasn't like necessarily sold outright. I think what's happening is he, he cut, you know, Gene is always cutting deals, right? He's a businessman at heart. And apparently um, he said it's a collaboration. So I don't know what that means because he sold the music and the IP apparently. But I'm sure he's going to get royalties for the rest of his life regardless. And the funny thing is uh, the company that he sold the rights to is a Swedish company, Pop House Entertainment. And uh, that was co-founded by um, one of the ABBA members. So uh, I'm sure that it, the 300 million was just part of it and he probably has some kind of a royalty deal or something like that. We don't know all the details, but I know for sure that um, Gene Simmons is not going to let go of, um, you know, the Kiss brand anytime soon. It's his baby and he knows how much it's worth. But the funny thing is, he did say something interesting. And I don't know if, how much I agree with him on this. He says, um, he, he was talking about the music business in general. And I think this is what led to him like wanting to also sell his stuff off. I mean, they're all getting old. I don't think they're going to be touring anymore. So it's probably the right time. But he said, there's not going to be another Beatles, Hendrix or Kiss because there's no longer a record industry. There's only chaos. <laughs> he says the next 15 year old kid who plugs into his Marshall amplifier won't be able to make a living because record companies don't pay advances, royalties or promotion anymore, which is true. Because uh, record companies nowadays are just like trying to survive in any way they can, right? And he says, it's the freckle-faced kid who feels that he or she is entitled, entitled to steal music without paying for it. Because uh, in their logic, you don't need money because you're rich being a musician. That's the problem with downloading and the internet. Now everything is for free. Well, honestly, I don't know how many people still download music illegal, illegally. Uh, there's probably still quite a few out there. I don't think they're all pimply faced or, or freckly faced children anymore. I think other people will do that as well. But now that you're able to pay for streaming, it's a, to, in my opinion, it's not worth the headache. You know, for like nine bucks a month, the pro, you know less than you would pay for a CD back in the day. I think CDs were like sixteen bucks or twenty bucks back in my day when I was buying CDs, and I have a shelf full of them here. Um, so for for less than what you would be paying for one CD. You basically have like practically all the, the music that was ever recorded right here in your phone. You know, so why even bother downloading? 
you know, and you can just stream them. And there lies the problem because artists are not getting paid much for streaming anymore. People, you got to stream a heck of a lot to be able to make money these days because artists gets, get paid a fraction of, of the dollars that they would normally make back in the day, right? But the thing is, it's, it's a two-sided uh, sword because back in the day, you would make more money up front because people had to buy your records, but you, you had access to a smaller demographic. Whereas now, you're basically global, right? You can put something out today and be global. Anybody around the world can have access to it instantly. Whereas back in the day, you, were, you didn't have that. So you get more fame, but maybe you get less money out of it. You know, I don't know exactly. I haven't crunched the numbers, but I know it's not much. People are not making that much anymore. So anyways, he goes on to say, and he has a point. He says, from 1958 to 1988, you can name at least 100 bands or artists that became iconic. Because in their, uh, and that's true. I mean, you can think about from 1958 to 1988, that's a long period of time. So you have the Beatles, you have the Doors, you have Elvis Presley, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, you know, Rush, Cream, all these bands. And then he says from 1988 until today, you won't be able to name one iconic band. Is that true? Can anybody name an iconic band? And he says, and don't tell me Nirvana, because they only had two albums and were done. <laughs> So he says, according to him, the nail has been put into the coffin of rock and roll and they're done. So I don't know who agrees with Gene. He has some pretty like stern opinions, I would say. Um, I think there's still going to be music and there's still going to be people making music. Will they become iconic? I guess it depends on what you think about, you know, what is iconic to you, you know? Station Unrest says, you'll own nothing and be happy. <laughs> Everything is going to subscription base or renting. It is true. It is true. Uh, Jean-Pierre says, you too. When did you two come out, JP? Didn't they come out after? Was it before? I think it was before 88, wasn't it? Or am I mistaken? I don't know if they hit the big time. Vinny's World says, I don't agree with all, with that at all. Most things before 88 to me was stuff I only found out about afterwards. Jeans, not my generation. Pearl Jam. But didn't, they, didn't Pearl Jam start before? Okay, so JP says you two started back in the 80s. Okay, so there you go. So we proved them wrong, guys. Tuning, yeah, I'm still in my tuner here, I think. Yeah, I remember listening to a lot of early. pretty big for a while nowadays I feel like they're just going through the motions but I mean they've they've done what they had to do they hit their plateau and you know good on them Paul says Tony the new streaming payment that started in 2024 says that there are zero payouts until 1 million streams are reached reached really and even that, even at that, when when one million streams are reached, they're not even getting a dollar per stream, right? They're getting like a fraction of a cent, probably. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to discourage anybody. Go ahead, continue playing your guitars. 
Uh, anyways, we play for the fun, right? We don't play to be famous. Um, I, I did have a poll question out, guys. Before I forget, I was getting sidetracked today. Uh, and the poll question is one that requires some reflection, I think. Uh, Guitar Vacation says tone is sounding good today. Uncle, hey, thank you, dude. Thanks. Nice to see you, man. Uh, right on, Monk. Or Munch. I always mispronounce that. I, I apologize, Stephen. I, I'm dense. I still can't get it. <laughs> um, so... Mad Max says, I've been a fan of you too since their second album. They played a different type of rock music. Yeah, it was it's more simple, right? Simplified. How does that go again? I'm not even the right key. Yeah, I think that's better. You need a delay though. Right? I don't have the delay, so I'm just playing through a, a Marshall uh, patch, so it's not the Vox and all that other effects that he's got going on, but it's pretty cool. Huh? How does he do the other part? I forget now. Uh, anyways, forget it. Still too early for me to be playing that stuff. Uh, so getting back to the poll question. See, I get distracted by shiny things. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, okay, so my poll question that requires some introspection, self-evaluation, and honesty is based on a question that um, perhaps some of you have asked yourselves deep down, inside, not out loud necessarily, because, you know, we don't... In this uh, type of venue, when we're talking about a gear addiction we don't like to think about whether or not you know our spending habit habits accurately reflect our talent <laughs> that's maybe a bad topic to bring up on this channel <laughs> but i think we need to talk about it you know who's with me on this who's ready for this kind of uh, hard truth <laughs> what a memory man yeah you do need a memory man it's true it is true memory man will do it you need to have two simultaneous settings so you can play two different um, delay uh, timings at the same time um, so all right so the question the poll question was and we'll get to the poll at the end but I want you to think about this and I want you to be honest all right on a scale of one to five, or it could be one to 10, uh, how would you rate your spending on guitars in relation to your talents as a musician? So if you're honest with yourself, you have five choices, okay? You have, I spend significantly less on guitars than my talents warrant, which in my opinion could be a good place to be. I spend slightly less on guitars than my talents warrant. I spend an appropriate amount, considering my talents, or I spend slightly more on my guitars than my talents warrant. Here we're getting into the danger zone. And of course, I spend significantly more on guitars than my talents warrant. 
all right? So think about that, guys. Think about it a little bit. We're going to get to that later on. I know where I fit, but I'm curious to know where you guys fit and if you guys are honest or not. <laughs> so we'll get to that in a little bit, okay? It's not poll time yet, Max, but we'll get, we're going to get to it. <laughs> Steven, I agree. Um, Steven says, I have no money, so my spending is on par with my talent. That being said, if I had money, I'd way overspend. I think a lot of us would go through, you know, if we had unlimited amounts of money, if tomorrow you win the Powerball jackpot, for example, um, I'd probably go a little ballistic. <laughs> And when I say a little, I mean a lot. I mean a lot. Um, but in any case, we're going to get to that. <laughs> Max says, I spend around 200 euros or dollars each month on guitar gear or buying a guitar. I still suck at playing stuff. But you know what? It's not always a question of, like, keep in mind, guys, buying gear doesn't make you a better player. If that was true, I think I would I would be way better than I am. I'm not, you know. It doesn't, a lot of people will, it's the equivalent of, I'm gonna put it this way. To me, buying guitar gear and guitars is like buying a self-help book for whatever issue you have and never reading it. You put it on the shelf, you know, and you don't read it because you think somehow magically having it is going to make you better, but it doesn't. <laughs> it's the same with guitars. You know, you think you're going to go out and buy that guitar that your, your idol plays and it's going to automatically somehow manifest itself into your psyche and make you a better player overnight without necessarily practicing. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I can vouch I can vouch for that. You know, but it doesn't necessarily mean that guitars don't bring you happiness, right? So surrounding yourself with some guitars, it's not necessarily a bad thing. To me, uh this room is the equivalent of my meditation room. You know, if I come in this room, I automatically get good vibes, you know, and looking at the guitars and you know, picking one up and playing one working on one of the guitars, you know, makes me feel good. So is that a bad thing? I don't think so. If you're not hurting anybody, right? I'm thinking. Do you agree with me, Billy? Amen, brother. You know? So, you know, life is short. You know, we're only here for what? A hundred years if we're lucky. And some of us are already, you know, halfway through that already. So, you know... Be happy, guys, you know. Do what brings you happiness. And this brings me happiness. So why is it bad? Um, <laughs> Billy says, words of wisdom, Tony. Dude, I'm just passing on what I already learned the hard way so you don't have to bang your head against the table, you know. If it, if it, if it can make it easier on any of you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> and like I always say, playing your guitar is cheaper than therapy. Because what, you know, psychiatrists and psychologists charge what? A minimum of like 150 bucks an hour, something like that. So gear is cheaper and it makes you happy. If it takes your mind off the negative and brings it into a positive place, it's good in my book. So Presley says, I'm finally getting into building guitars from scratch. Presley, I thought you were already doing that, man. I guess you were you were building part casters and now you're you're going the full Monty. That that's courageous, dude. I gotta I gotta hand it to you. I haven't this I've never built a guitar from scratch. Like I'm thinking, if I had to build a guitar neck, I wouldn't know where to start. In, in order to actually make it accurate. 
So I prefer to leave that to the pros. And I'm happy working with parts, but I hand it to you, man, if you can if you get if you can get to the stage where you're building everything from scratch, including the necks, you got my uh you got my uh you know my award for being courageous. <laughs> Time Surfing Alien says, when I have money, I buy. Still can't play worth a dang. <laughs> Mark says, anyone have an, any experience with a rock and roller cart? Is is that um, one of those carts that you use to uh, carry stuff to and fro? I'm not even sure what that is. If it is something like that, uh, I'm looking for one. Let me just uh, Google that. Oh, it is, yeah. So it's like a little trolley, right? You can get them off Amazon, I guess, and lug all your gear. Yeah, I, I need one of those, man. I don't know why somebody hasn't actually designed something specifically to make it easy to carry a guitar, one guitar, an amp head, a pedal board, and you know, just a couple of accessories in one like molded case or something like that, you know, but made specifically for musicians. I mean, if you build something like that, I think that's a million dollar idea right there. And I know there's a couple of companies that have made like different types of carts and stuff like that, but none of them will carry the essentials. Like I need to carry a guitar, you know, an amp head, a pedal board and accessories in something that has wheels that you can just roll. That would be ideal. It would save my back. A lot of us have to like just, you know, MacGyver something ourselves. There, there is a, I can see here that the, the, rock, the rock and roller cart is about $286 Canadian. Uh, but there is something a little cheaper that looks like it might do the job as well. It's called um, VEVOR. It's an aluminum hand truck, two in one, 300 pound load capacity, heavy duty industrial, and it's only 119 bucks. And I think you can get it. Here, let me show you this, uh, Mark. I don't know if you can order from these guys since you're in the, in the States, but whoop, sorry, wrong guy. <laughs> this thing here, very similar, but it, it does fold up smaller. And it looks like you'd be able to carry quite a few things with it. You maybe need a few bungees but it might work, it's a little less expensive. They also have this, but this one looks kind of small. It's tricky, man. It's hard to find good stuff these days. Uh, yeah, I understand, I know. I, I totally get it. Maybe a wheelbarrow. <laughs> I'm joking. I, I don't have um I don't have a, a better solution, unfortunately. I'm looking for one myself. Something that you can just put everything on and but you know, putting a guitar case in something like that is not easily doable. We're getting to that age where we're we're trying to find easier ways to carry stuff. You know, when I lug all my stuff, I got a bad back as it is, and I lug all my stuff to the rehearsal, and I'm trying to do this, uh, you know, there's no parking available easily, so you're, you're sometimes you're walking a block or so, and you're carrying all this gear, and by the time you get in, your back's already ruined. You haven't even put your guitar strap on yet. And then you still gotta play for three hours. <laughs> Charles says, <laughs> Charles says, that's usually how they haul me out. <laughs> Charles, that's funny, man. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, you're a funny dude. <laughs> All right. What what else are we talking about here, guys? Today we we're getting off track. We're things are going off the rails already. Hey, Orion, how are you, buddy? Uh, MFN says hi, Tony. I'm guessing for a thin line Telecaster. Which should I get and why? Single coils or humbuckers? Ah, uh, good question. I mean, uh, do you want to go full Telecaster tone or you're looking for a hybrid? Do you already have a Telecaster or is this like, is this a secondary guitar, secondary Telecaster, or is it your only one? Because if it's your only one, I mean, I don't know why you would necessarily want to go with humbuckers on a Telecaster unless you already have a Telecaster and you got that sound covered. Uh, Presley says, I suffer from, you're amazing. You can do anything you try. Thanks, dad. I said from the hospital bed after a hand gliding accident. <laughs> well, you know what they say, Presley, if you fail at uh, skydiving, maybe it's not for you, right? Or uh, as the old so uh, saying goes, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try again, unless it's skydiving. So there's always a couple of different ways to look at things. Everybody's looking at things through their own filter. <laughs> but going back to MF's question, I would say, if you can, get both. If you already have a single coil, then maybe, yeah, go with the, um, go with the humbuckers. I think it's pretty cool to have or you can do the Keith Richards thing. You can keep the, the single coil Telecaster pickup in the bridge position and go with a, uh, a nice fatter sounding humbucker in the neck. Then you got your bases covered. What do you think about that? Rico says, Tony, have you talked about the new Epis? Uh, not today so far. I have talked about the new Epis last week. Uh, I can talk about them a little today too, if you wish. We can always talk about those. I don't understand either, Time Surfing Alien. You're not going to get me to go skydiving anytime soon. I am. I believe if God wanted you to fly here, he would have given you wings. You know, and skydiving is not really flying or anything. It's more like falling gracefully. Um, but yeah, that's not for me. So the new Epis, if you want to talk about those, uh, there's a lot of advertising going on with those, especially with the new headstocks. And a lot of people are interested in grabbing one of those nowadays because um, they've been putting off buying them. Well, if you're like me, I like the, the, you know, the open book headstocks. The Epis that are out today, and I have a, an SG Epiphone, they have the inspired by Gibson headstock on those, which are better. But now they've leveled up their game and now they're using this as a little carrot, I would say, to be able to sell more Epis and charge a little more. And I think it's gonna work. Because I think a lot of people just weren't buying the Epis because they didn't like the headstock. So I think, yes, they will, they will probably sell, uh, but unfortunately the prices are higher. They do claim, however, and this is probably marketing blah blah, so take it with a big grain of salt. They do claim that uh, now that they're gonna be selling these Epiphones with the new headstocks, that they're gonna be closer than they ever were to, let's say, the Gibson brand. You know, the pickups are gonna be better, the quality is supposed to be better and whatnot. So is that true? Only time will tell, but you will pay more for them. And I think with this, bringing up the lower end now, I think, you know, it'll be, it'll kind of, in their eyes, justify the shift uh, in the cost for the higher, uh, more expensive guitars. So, you know, slowly, all the Gibson guitars have been getting more expensive. So this now will up the, I guess, the ground floor level guitars which 
if you stand back and look at them, you were gonna you would probably say to yourself, oh, you know, I guess it makes sense to pay more for the more expensive for the higher end ones now because the lower ones are so expensive. The lower end ones are so expensive, you know. Um, do I agree with it? Eh. I'm cheap, so I prefer to get something um, affordable. Uh, do you have other choices? You always have choices. But I mean, Epiphones are not bad guitars. They're not Gibsons, but they're trying to make you think of them like they are Gibsons. Even though they're they're not made in the US, they're made overseas and all the rest of it. Shane says, meh. Just buy a Gibson instead of an overhyped Epiphone. Gibson just wants us to pay premium prices for Chinese labor. Yeah, they do. That's the, the whole point of staying in business, right? Manufacture things cheaply and sell them for a lot more. I think the at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to buy a Gibson and, you know, you're going to buy a brand new Gibson and you're willing to bite the bullet and pay premium dollars for it, there's something to be said for the brand. Obviously, you know, you you, you will be able to sell the Gibson um, later on for more than you would be able to sell an, Ep an Epiphone for. The Epiphones don't necessarily keep their value as much, you know, like they drop substantially. So if you pay, let's say, a thousand or twelve hundred for an Epiphone, by the time you sell that Epiphone, regardless of the headstock, you know, you're going to have to sell it for 800 maybe. So you probably lose a good chunk. Uh, Rico says, Tony, the Epiphone website shows two white LP Customs, $799, and the new one for $1,299. Do you think the new one is worth $500 more? Uh, and again, Rico, I think those are American prices, right? Am I wrong? Because if those are American prices, Canadian, you're looking at maybe $499, $1,499. Do I think the new ones are worth $500 more because they changed the headstock? No. No. It's the same guitar. Same guitar. They're, they're talking about maybe putting better pickups in there, which is good. But I, I don't think um, a slightly different carve up here and slightly better pickups is worth $500 more. But I know there will be people paying that kind of money. <laughs> Paul's got a great point. You can buy a used ambulance for twenty uh, $26,000 Canadian park anywhere for free and move your gear that way. Good idea, dude. <laughs> you guys are full of creative ideas today. Uh, Stu, uh, Stu Pop says some of them, some of the new ones have custom buckers in them. Okay. Um, again, you, know, you could buy whatever pickups you want and put them into any guitar, so. I'm not sure I'd go for it. I mean, that's just me. Yeah, they release a whole bunch of models, Max. They're getting ready, man. Summer's here. Listen, I, I'm I'm happy that I did that I bought my, you know, the Gibson SG. Uh, standard, uh, the Gibson Classic behind me. I'm having a great time playing those. Um, I had, I still have an Epiphone SG with P90s, but it's an Epiphone Special. Um, and the reason why I bought that one was because it was very difficult for me to find an affordable Gibson SG Special uh, with the wraparound bridge for any like reasonable amount of money. So I figured I, I'll get that one. It'll scratch my itch for one and, and I'll be done with it, you know. Has it actually worked? I don't know. If I would see a good uh, SG special somewhere, an older one at a reasonable price, maybe I'd still jump for it. But now that I have the 
the custom behind me with the P90s, I think I have my ground covered. Uh, Eddie says, would anybody buy a 3000 plus Gibson and let Trilogy tear it apart? Not me. I wouldn't. <laughs> Guys, while you're here, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Uh, I appreciate, and it does help the channel and, uh, you know, get more views and all that. So we can continue growing the channel. Uh, I did buy something. I don't know if I mentioned this uh, recently or not. I did get one of these. The Wampler guys make great pedals and I decided to grab one of these. Uh, the Pantheon Overdrive. Have you guys tried one of these? Um, I love Wampler stuff. I think they're made extremely well. I have uh, a couple of different Wampler pedals that have been on my board for a long time. And I never actually tried this one. So I decided uh, I was gonna get one, give it a shot, give it a go, do a couple of demos for you guys. But I've gotten lazy. You guys noticed that, right? I've gotten lazy. I haven't actually put out a new video in a couple of weeks. And I don't know why that is. I just like, I'm, I'm having more fun playing guitar right now than actually reviewing stuff. But I got a whole bunch of stuff here that's, in the wings waiting to go so uh they will be trickling out hey presley uh, have a great day at work my friend and if you do put something together and you build something let me know dude i'd love to see it uh i haven't finished i haven't finished my uh the amp i was building so i have um, a princeton reverb that's almost completed i haven't touched it um, I have a, a guitar body that was um, generously given to me um, by my nephew, which is the Jimmy Page, a, a, a painted Jimmy Page Telecaster body that I want to get built. And I, I don't have time, unfortunately, because I, you know, I'm busy with other things. But more importantly, is I, I haven't even been able to find. Um, I thought I would be able to find the pickguard for the Dragon Telecaster. I've been looking everywhere. They, they would pop up from time to time on reverb and stuff like that. But lately, nothing, uh, at least nothing for a reasonable price. Um, I think a lot, I've seen some where they, they're selling the pick guard and all of the, like the hardware. So the, the pick the pickups and the controls and everything as a, a kit, but very expensive. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to like maybe make my own, like basically cut my own. Uh, there is a website out there uh, which is actually quite helpful. I'll actually share it with you guys. Have you guys seen this website? It's called, uh, this is, um, it's someone's website where they put together a lot of information on building their very own dragon caster. And they go through the steps and everything they, that they've done. And they actually made their own pick card. You know? And that's probably going to be the easiest way for me to get a pick card for this guitar. But I would have to actually, you know, um, route out a pick card. And then uh, put some backing foil on it and make it look like the original like that. So I didn't want to do that necessarily, but I might have no choice. If any of you out there spot one in the wild, please let me know. Drop me an email because um, I need to get one. I want to get this project started. I made a promise that I would build it and I'm going to build it. I'm going to stick to my promise. Um, Rico says I have a Wampler Brad Paisley Overdrive great pedal and tone yeah and Brad knows his tone Marcel says Tony do you use pedals with your modeling amp since it already has some um, it's not an amp Marcel it's a, a floor unit it's a uh, 
an FM9. I don't use pedals. You can. You can you can actually put pedals in this thing like as if you're using the effects loop of your amplifier. But I don't because honestly all the effects I need are in this thing already. So it doesn't really make sense for me to to loop in another pedal. If there was something I didn't already have in there that I wanted to put in, I would. But for right now, no, I don't really do that that often. Eddie says uh, w, WD or Pickguard Heaven makes custom pickguards. They do, but they won't necessarily make a different shape like that one, as far as I know, Eddie. Yeah, and it is hard to find that paper for the pick guard. <laughs> There's all kinds of little things, but I'm going to try. Hey, Shane, sweet dreams. Thank you for joining in. I'd always appreciate you guys staying up late. Enjoy the, um, the, the eclipse tomorrow. Let me know how it goes on your end. Since you guys are, some of you guys are all over the world, so you're you're pretty much gonna have a different experience. Marcel says I skydive twice. I suffered from vertigo, bad inner ear. I don't understand why I was not scared to get out of the Cessna, just of getting my foot off the strut in order to let go. Man, you're brave, Marcel. I wouldn't be able to do that, man. No way. Uh, and Paul says, I don't care what they want for an Epi. It's a copy guitar. You can buy better, cheaper. But Paul, I mean, isn't that the premise? I mean, slowly Gibson is really using that premise everywhere. Low end and high end, if you think about it, right? They're trying to make you think that the Epiphones are better now because they have a different headstock and slightly better pickups so they can charge you $500 more. Uh, at the same time, you know, all the reissues, they're, they're asking a lot of money for the reissues, but they're not, they're not old guitars, they're new guitars. Let's not forget that. Same with the custom shop stuff, same with Murphy's Lab stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, they're brand new guitars, but you're paying um, vintage guitar prices or close to vintage guitar prices for them. So that's their premise, you know, at the end of the day. And it's working for them. Uh, Steven says, um, I may be able to make custom pick guards <clears throat> after I move. Excuse me move and set up my CNC mill again. Steven, that's that's cool, man. Actually, that would be a great a great sideline to get into. Custom pick cards. I saw that one, Rico. I saw that one. Just re just search reverb, they have a loaded dragon uh a page dragon pick card for $270. I don't want to spend $300 Canadian or more. For a pick card. <laughs> yeah, the artist stores will have that paper. You know, if you go to one of these stores where they um, they sell paper for scrapbooking, they usually have that kind of paper. It's just to find the right color. And it's hard to match something because when you're looking at an image of it, it's never the right color. You can't match, can't color match from a photo. It's very difficult. Yeah, uh, Amazon does have pick cards for less than 30 bucks, but they don't have that pick card. Yeah, the paper is cheap. It's just finding the right one. Vinny's World says, yeah, like when they move to custom when they move the custom model from the USA line to the custom shop 
and double the price. And there's not that much of a difference, to be honest. That's what irks me a little bit, is because like when they make, uh, when they put out a guitar, so let's say they say it's a 60s reissue or whatever it is. Okay, so it's a 60s reissue, what's the difference? The carve on the neck, right? So you're basically, I don't know, carving it a little bit more. The, the type of pickups that are in the guitar, possibly. But besides that, I mean, the day-to-day -day is kind of the same. Okay, you might have nitro instead of poly, but how do you justify double the price? It's really a question of specs, right? I don't think it was really aluminum foil paper, Max, because it did have like, um, it had that flip-flop effect. So yeah, anyway, maybe I'm just jaded. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to grab my uh, my SG for a second, guys. I'm going to grab the SG cuz I want to decide what I'm going to bring tonight. I'm leaning towards the SG just because it's lighter, but I haven't decided. And actually, I haven't actually, I haven't actually played this SG, the new uh, classic yet, with the band. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know. We never know till the last minute, till I'm out the door. Gotta tune this thing up for a second. Oh, and I did order a set of uh, new tuners for this guy. I was talking about the tuners last week and I ordered a set and actually I actually think I got a good deal because they were only 99 bucks whereas a lot of the uh, other ones were way more expensive I think I'm gonna get better tuning stability out of those tuners I'll keep these I'll put them in a bag and just hang on to them but I won't um, I won't regret changing them. You can hear the difference in tone compared to the um, the humbuckers. They're definitely not as fat. They're not as fat. They're not. You won't get enough uh, as much output. But they still sound good. I think. You might not agree with me, but I like it. It has that, um, I don't know how you, like if I put it in the neck here. It's more of like a rounder tone, but the neck, uh, the bridge pickup still has bite, you know? So. Hard to get everything to sound. When you're playing with that much drive, you're gonna get that that dissonance, you know? Um, so Ma uh, Max says, Jimmy Page Telecaster also had a vintage style grooved, grooved saddle. It was a top loader. Was it a top loader? I don't think it was a top loader. I was hoping that it was a top loader, but I think it's not. You correct me if I'm wrong, but the um, I know the Fender version that they made was not a top loader. So why would they do that? You tell me, is it a top loader or not? Let's, 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 let's investigate guys, I, I need to, I need to figure this out. So, 
uh, here. I'm going to see if I can find some photos of the back of it. Um, I probably won't find photos of the original. Uh, let's see. So I, I don't want to doubt anybody, but I don't know if we're going to see pictures of the back. or clear pictures of the front. So here's a picture of the restored one, but I don't have a picture of the back. Here we go, boom. So let me just zoom in as much as I can. Can't really zoom in much more. I can't really see, but this is Jimmy Page with it. Yeah, I don't know, man. Does anybody have a better photo? The white page telecaster is a top loader. Is that the same as the dragon? I don't think it is. Because if you look at the um, Fender version, I'm just trying to see if I can find a picture of the back of that guitar. I don't think anybody's gonna have a picture of the back of that guitar. Um, let me see. All the pictures that I find are blurry. Like, you know, the original pictures with Jimmy Page playing them. So I can't really tell you if it is a back loader or not. But I know that the new ones that are made by uh, Fender are not. Here we have a, a picture here. Uh, and it's hard to, to know which one is the real one and which one is like a, just a, a part caster. But I have a picture of the Fender version. So here, let's go to the Fender website. So this is the Fender version. I know you can't tell from the front, it's hard unless you can see the little ball ends of the strings. But here you, you can see, uh, here, let me see if they have a picture. Uh, there, can I zoom in? All right. So you see, it the strings are top-loaded. You can see that the ball ends are top-loaded, but the holes are there. So he may have been top-loading it, but the holes are still in the back of the guitar. See? See right there? Oop, I missed it. Anyways, you saw it. <laughs> So because the holes are there, you see my, my body doesn't have the holes. So I was hoping it would be top loaded because I would make it more accurate. And I was hoping there would be no holes in the back of it, but there is. Max says, uh, see high quality pictures in Toman Jimmy Page's Telecaster. Okay, let me, let me look at those. What am I, if I put in that link, I should be able to see it. Sorry for geeking out on everybody here, but I, I, I wanna know. All right, I don't know if I'm at the right place. Uh, no. I'm on, I'm on the Toman side here and I see the holes in the back. So anyways, if you have a picture or something, send it to me. I'd like to know. 
Otherwise, I'm going to just uh, assume that he was top loading it, but it wasn't necessarily, it still had the holes in the back. So guys, should we answer our poll question? Let's answer the poll question, all right? Let's do it. Since it's getting uh, an hour and a half, I've been yapping here. You guys are probably itching to go outside, as am I. So let's go to the poll question and see what the answers are. And of course, I hope you guys took the opportunity to answer the poll question today so that uh, we have all of the statistics ready. Uh, let me just go to the community section of our website of the Addicted to Gear channel. And look at that. All right, here we are. So who's honest? I'll be the first one to answer that question because I'm going to I'm going to tell you right off the bat that I do spend more money than I should based on my skill level as a guitarist. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm being totally honest with everybody. <laughs> I know it. Um, but I'm happy with that. If I if I had to buy my skill level of playing, I all I would really need is like a you know, give me a, a Squire classic vibe or something like that. And uh, give me a, uh, a Princeton amp and stuff. And that's all I would really need. <laughs> According to my playing technique and, and skill level. Uh, but of course, I love guitars. And I'm going to keep buying stuff. It's just hardwired in my brain. So that is what it is. And I've accepted it. And I'm good with that. All right. So let's go to the poll question. Let's see how many people actually took the poll. Uh, we have 185 votes so far. I'll recap, uh, I'll recap the question. On a scale of one to five, how would you rate your spending on guitars in relation to your talents as a musician? So let's go with, let's go with the, the most popular answer. And I already know what that is. Considering you guys are all here, and the channel's called Addicted to Gear. No surprise that 43% of you said, I spend significantly more on guitars than my talent warrants. I get it. I think you're in the right place. I think we all speak the, the same language. And um, I, I, at the end of the day, I think it's a common issue. Um, interestingly though, the number two spot is a tie between the next two answers. So 21% of you say I spend slightly more on guitars than my talents warrant. And 21% of you said I spend an appropriate amount of guitars on guitars considering my talents. Now, that leads me to another question. What is appropriate? How do you gauge what's appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> or is this just like another way of fooling yourself and saying, you oh, know, uh, yeah, I spend in, I spend the appropriate amount on guitars. I can say that too. Looking behind me, I know it's not, it's a lie, but I can convince myself that I'm spending the appropriate amount on guitars. <laughs> but I know it's not true. All right, next, 12% of you said, I spend significantly less on guitars than my talents were uh, warrant. So you're actually, you consider yourself to be a better player and you spend less, which I think that's a good place to be. I Means you're always striving for, you know, the next level. And only 4% of you said, I spend slightly less on guitars than my talents warrant. Only 4% of you. But what's interesting though, is there's there was some cool comments and I wanted to share those comments with you guys. Uh, one person says, everyone knows more gear equals a better musician. Tongue in cheek, wink, wink. Uh, somebody else says, 100% more than I should based on my skill level and use time. So uh, this person was very honest, spends 100% more. Gene Kelly says, after working on various purchasing jobs, I acquired a certain set of spending skills to maximize my cash potential. I don't gas, I research first, which is great. I think that's the way to do it. You want to research, 
you want to make a purchase, make the right purchase and not regret it. Um, somebody else says, my playing is nowhere near up to the level of my gear. And this one made me laugh. He said, if I base my spending on talent, I'd have an unplugged guitar hero controller and a single broken high E string. <laughs> that one made me laugh. So thank you. Thank you for the giggles. I think that was, that was nice. <laughs> I appreciate the humor. Um, but I totally, I totally get the, you know, the conundrum of where do you stop? And I don't think we're going to answer that question here today, but I think it's important to remember guys, if it brings you happiness and you're using it, even though it's expensive, I think it's worthwhile. If it's cheap, you know, and, you, and it's thrown in the corner ga gathering dust, that's a waste, right? So you, you have both scenarios. The idea here is basically buy what makes you happy, use what makes you happy, and if it doesn't make you happy anymore, get rid of it. Don't hoard, just play what makes you happy. Uh, I think that would, that would be the best scenario for everyone. On that note, I wanna just show you one thing before we wrap up today. Not guitar related, but I wanted to share it with you. I actually did a little, I, I added something to the man cave, which you can't see because it's on my wall behind the camera, but I wanna share that with you. Um, let me just grab that, one sec. I'm a big Clean Eastwood fan. So I ended up getting one of these and uh, had to frame it, had to add it to the, um, to the man cave. And it's uh, something that brings me joy. I love Clint. I love these old spaghetti Westerns, especially these old classics. And uh, I finally got one. I don't know if any of you out there love Clint Eastwood or the old Westerns, but these guys, they don't make them like that anymore. They're, they're, they're timeless classics. You know, if you're not a fan, they're a little long, but if you haven't already seen it, you should watch these movies and just uh, enjoy them because they don't make movies like that today anymore. So that's it. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up. I think we're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna go for a quick walk, get some more vitamin D, get some fresh air and exercise, then come back. I'm gonna have some practicing to do tonight. So I'll be ready for my, uh, my rehearsal. And uh, give me a thumbs up, please. Wish my daughter uh, the best of luck on her surgery. Uh, say a little amen in your hearts for her and hopefully she'll be, um, you know, back home and no worse for the wear after the surgery tomorrow. And uh, I'll give you an update on the next uh, show, which will be the next Sunday. Keep your eyes open. I might get become unlazy this week and start posting some other videos that are long overdue um but uh, that's the plan anyway all right don't hold me to it but that's the plan <laughs> all right guys have a wonderful weekend enjoy yourself be safe and uh most importantly you know uh remember do what you what your heart tells you to do if it's playing guitar, then that's what you need to be doing. Um, again, make yourself happy because happiness, happiness comes from within, guys. You're not Nobody else out there is going to make you happy. Nothing's going to make you happy except yourself. It's all in the mind. Remember that. All right, guys. Have a wonderful week. See you soon. And uh, Godspeed to everybody. Enjoy the eclipse tomorrow. <laughs>